would there be a way where let's say you just meet the quota where there's just a checkbox that you meet the five points that are needed to trade on this exchange, but your actual first name and last name are not given to the lending protocol. Is that, yeah, absolutely. And uh, I can actually, we've had discussions with some very big companies who are looking at uh, building that type of computation as a service. So, yeah. you know, just imagine that you're a very large cloud provider, right? Not going to name anybody here. And uh, that that you are interested in offering services to blockchain companies. One of the one of the services that's at the top of their list right now from the conversations that I have is being able to uh, create computational clean rooms, right? And so for people in crypto, you'll know these as um, uh, uh, zero knowledge VMs, so ZKVMs. And, and what this will <laughs> enable people to do, so let's just make this super easy, is you go to Uniswap, Uniswap wants to be compliant with New York. And I'm choosing New York for a reason because they have all the crazy freaking rules, right? Yeah. Uh, and like, they just want to make it too expensive to do business in New York, I think. It's like, they're like, we have too much business here. We don't want anymore. So let's just make a bunch of rules. Anyway, so you live in New York and you want to follow all the rules. You know, you're a hedge fund and you have to, or you're just a person who you just wants to follow all the rules in New York because that's what you're supposed to do. New York has their list of rules of things that they need that they need to get done. But when you go to Uniswap, you need to be able to provide Uniswap with all the information so that they can show that they have uh, followed the rules. Um, but you don't want Uniswap to have a copy of your data because they could get hacked, right? <laughs> or they could resell it. And reselling is what most people do. So there's two. There's a couple ways to protect that. The first way is if you exchange your data to Uniswap using uh, NFT domain as the um, as the the lookup for exchanging that data, there's going to be a user agreement off the rip with Uniswap that says they will not resell it. So they'll be legally obligated to not do it. But we know in crypto that that's not good enough because uh, like just because someone's legally obligated to do something doesn't mean they won't do it anyway, or maybe the data get leaks. So what we'd really like to do is for you to send your data to a third party uh, that can do these, uh, that can, that can take your data. And then the third party can also take the computer program for Uniswap that checks the data. So Uniswap will write a computer program. It will check like, do you live in New York? You know, um, are you eligible to trade? Do you have any disqualifiers? Whatever. Uh, so Uniswap sends the computer program up to the third party. You send your data up to the third party. And then the computer program is run on the data. And then Uniswap gets a receipt that says the data has been run. And then they store that receipt. And that receipt doesn't have any of your personal information. And they can use that receipt to then show to whoever the regulator is. And the regulator knows that that receipt proves that this was actually done correctly based on the code. Um, and then what happens inside of this clean room where the data is computed in a perfect world, and this is what we'll build to over time, uh, when you send your data, it's encrypted. And when Uniswap sends the program to verify the data, uh, it, it's put in there with the encrypted data. And then the data is only decrypted inside of this secure environment. Read once, receipt is outputted, deleted as part of that process. So not even the company who's running the data is able to um, look at it. So that's like the long-term goal we're trying to get to with Web3, uh, really enabling people to own their data, to dictate all the ways that that data can be read and used and to have complete privacy over that data while still enabling other people to uh, feel very strong guarantees and verifications around um, you doing what you said you were supposed to. And that's what's great about all this technology.